the NBA bubble. Probably the craziest time in history to be a basketball fan. The NBA's response to the COVID-19 pandemic was to restart their season with the top 22 teams in Walt Disney World. The next few months gave us fans a whole lot that is still being discussed today. And speaking of today, it marks the two year anniversary of the last day of the NBA bubble, when the Lakers won their 17th NBA championship by defeating the Miami Heat. There's no better time to look back on all the craziness that led to that moment. Also, if you haven't already, please do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Really helps out a smaller channel like ours. And if you do subscribe, your NBA team will win the championship next year. Now, am I lying about that? And eh, maybe, but better to subscribe just to be safe. So let's start at the beginning. So what do you think of when COVID hits? You know, I was still at the University of Oregon at the time, and I just remember being like, is this really a big deal? Because I was still going to the rec center every day and playing basketball, and I was getting emails from my professor saying, oh, we're moving the final to online out of abundance of caution. I'm like, really? We already heard like the swine flu before and it was like, this ain't gonna be nothing. Like this will be gone a little bit. Maybe it'll be a vaccine real quick and then we'll move on and then that just didn't happen. I mean, we've obviously haven't seen anything like this since the Spanish flu 100 years ago, which we obviously were not around for, but it just, it was one of those things where it's like, that's not gonna happen. With all the modern medicine we have, no, we're not gonna have a pandemic. The first guy in Washington got it and we're like, oh shit. <laughs> like, ah, oh, great. Then 100 people had it. Then 2000. I remember I packed up my room to head home for spring break. And we were talking like when I was getting ready to head back, I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna hit the gym when I get back. And you were like, race, the gym is closed. I'm like, what? what is happening? Like, am I, am I losing my mind here? Then NBA players started getting it. And then the first moment when it hit the NBA was when Rudy Gobert got it. I think that was when it kind of got real, I guess Tom Hanks got it first, I think, but he was in Australia. So it's like, okay, that's still far away. But when Gobert got it, he was like, oh shit, he's here. He's in this country. And then they started just backtracking games. And I remember it's just like random games Gobert was in. Then another player from that game would get it. Then the next guy would get it. I think Donovan Mitchell got it like right away. Cause they test, they isolated the jazz for like three hours in the arena after everyone else had left tested all of them and then gobert did that shit where he was like mocking it where he started just like touching his hands over on the mics and shit and just like being obnoxious what a dumbass that was hilarious what are you talking about it's absolutely hilarious especially in hindsight especially with him being the first guy to get it it's hysterical but even if you didn't think it was a big deal like i didn't think COVID was a big deal when it first started but when i was at the gym i wasn't going out of my way to touch as much of the equipment as possible. Like, you don't do that. And then one day the league just was like, all right, we're shutting it. It's all over, folks. The best reaction that you can get is Mark Cuban's reaction, both on the sideline and the interview he did afterwards, where he just, he was in as just in disbelief like all of us, where it's like, how, how did this happen? How could this happen? We're shutting down the NBA season? The uncertainty, like, is it gonna come back? Like, they gotta finish somehow. Exactly. I mean, they, the NBA too, they were the first major league to shut down and pretty much every league followed suit. And those, what, it was like four months, I guess, before anything was really announced where we were all staying home. There was absolutely nothing to do but play 2K. Yeah, but you gotta give shout out to 2K for those stay safe shirts. Oh, of course you do. I was rocking the Russia one, which in hindsight is a terrible look, but you know what, I gotta own it. The 2K community rallied the world at a time when nobody had any hope. The 2K park gave us something. The 2K gave us some entertainment when we had nothing else to do. Ronnie 2K kept basketball alive. And what were those things the NBA did? The NBA Together games? Oh, the NBA, that whoever came up with that deserves a huge raise. That was one of the best marketing strategies the NBA has ever had. Like when we would hang out during this time, which was like very far, few and far between, I'd just be like, all right, what's the NBA together game today? We just put that on. You just watch KD play the Grizzlies from like 2014 and enjoy the moment for a bit. Yeah, it was great. Plus now we have relatively high quality footage of a bunch of classic NBA games, which as a fan of NBA history, it's awesome. By April 6th, Adam Silver said they weren't gonna make a decision till May 1st, and that was like, 
that was crushing because it's like, damn, another. We gotta wait another month before we even make a decision on if the NBA is coming back. And you know, the decision or whatever plan they have in place, that's probably like three, four months away. So we were thinking at that point, God, we realistically. I mean, maybe the NBA comes back. Maybe it doesn't. We didn't really know. Hey, I was hyped. The Blazers had a chance at the playoffs and they didn't before. Yeah, I mean, I was too. About to get the whole squad back. <laughs> I was hyped too, but God, those months of just waiting and waiting and waiting. It was just, it was agonizing. Finally, we got to June 4th, where the Board of Governors finally voted to restart the season in Disney World of all places, which of course gave rise to a joke that will live forever in the NBA community of the Mickey Mouse champion but we will get to that down the road. Can't wait! Apparently, Las Vegas and Houston were also considered as options, but honestly, Disney World makes by far the most sense. They already had a facility where you could play, plus they had just a bunch of hotels that players could stay at, activities on property for them to do so they don't go crazy. I mean, they almost went crazy anyway, but... The Mickey Mouse bubble. How else do you brand it any differently? You really can't. I mean, I wouldn't have had a problem with it, but we're big Disney shills, so... Yeah, I guess it made sense to all have it in one place, and people were hyping up the bubble from a logistic perspective just how they were able to keep like no covid positives basically that was it was impressive oh yeah the logistics of it are insane to house not only the players but coaches training staff media to keep all those people in a bubble and yeah zero covid cases for three months with all those people like that is wildly impressive tip of the cap so who got left out the, the bottom eight they were considering having a second bubble in chicago for the eight teams that didn't make it which why it's the bottom eight teams none of them i mean they all probably would want to lose to improve their draft stock they can't go to the playoffs so what's the point it'd just be a bunch of tanking teams trying to lose games Okay, what if the second bubble, the winner of that bubble gets the first pick? Okay. That's just how they do the lottery. That would have been interesting because then you've got bad NBA players playing to <laughs> give their team a better chance at replacing them. Like, why are you trying to go all out to help your team get the guy who's gonna replace you? What if like they did a second bubble and it's more of like a bowl game concept where like the winners of the bubbles maybe get like a PS5 and like, <laughs> A hundred dollar gift card to DoorDash for the rest okay. of the pandemic. Okay, well you I might need more. to up the rewards. <laughs> Maybe the second bubble should have been something more like, it's almost kind of like an all-star weekend type thing where you got like a four point line and then just like throw everything out the window. Just to experiment with everything that you have had on the table for the past couple years <laughs> yeah. and just see, what's, see what sticks. <laughs> to be fair, the play-in, that only exists because of the bubble. Yeah, now the play-in, I mean, f the play-in this year because it let the Pelicans keep their pick. So that sucks, but as a whole, I, I like the play-in. Okay, let's talk about the schedule because the NBA did everything in their power to get Zion Williamson in the playoffs. <laughs> they did. Good Lord, that Pelican schedule was so damn weak. The NBA, they just thought of the bubble. It's like, how can I get LeBron James to play Zion in the first round of the playoffs? And guess what? It didn't work. I got to take a look at this Pelican schedule, though. They had Utah and then the Clippers. But then after that, they had Memphis, Sacramento, Washington, San Antonio, Sacramento, and Orlando. And they still only went two and six. Yeah, they were a joke. They finished with the worst record of all the seeding teams in the West. I mean, this was the year, this was what, Zion's rookie year? This was the year that New Orleans had 27 national TV games. Oh God. Because they were just like, all right, we're gonna have Zion on TV a ton. And of course he didn't play it till like halfway through the season. So for the first three months of the season, we just had garbage like Pelicans Clippers games that were just 25 point wins for the Clippers because Zion wasn't playing. I swear it was like once a week, the Pelicans were on national TV. Yeah. It was constantly. You check the schedule and you're like, huh, guess I'm watching the Lakers beat down the Pelicans tonight. God, you know the NBA was licking their chops before the season when they scheduled that like, oh, we're gonna have LeBron, we're gonna have Zion. It's gonna be at one o'clock on a Saturday on ABC. Like this is gonna be ratings gold. And of course it just doesn't work out. Hey, shout out to Dame for eating the bubble, getting that bubble MVP. He doesn't get enough credit for that. Is that the biggest accomplishment of his career? It's gotta be, it's an MVP. Well, there's first team all NBA that he made twice. Three times, maybe? I think twice at least. Nope. 
Like, does he have that bubble MVP trophy? Is that a thing? Did they even give him a trophy? I mean, I've seen the picture on Twitter with him holding up the Mickey Mouse one. You know, I, I don't think that's the actual trophy. The only thing I've ever seen, because it's not listed on like his achievements on Wikipedia. The only thing I've ever seen for this bubble MVP thing was just a tweet from, is that like the ESPN account or like the NBA account? Okay, that's at least more impressive than the coach of the bubble. What the hell is that award? I mean, it's Monty Williams, the Suns win eight, no. You think so that's it's all a the coach players? of the bubble? That's a yeah. thing? Well, if there's an MVP, why can't there be a coach of the bubble? So there should be the all, yeah, the all bubble teams. There was the all bubble team. I mean, TJ Warren, he was obviously going to make first team after how he was playing. What the <laughs> hell was that? This is how crazy this shit was, though. Like, in what world is TJ Warren first team all anything in the NBA? <laughs> like, come the bubble on. was another planet. It was another universe. The thing is, you know, you could do the bubble again and TJ Warren's still getting 40. So who were the players on the all bubble team? Yeah, your first team was Dame, Devin Booker, Doncic, Harden, and TJ Warren, which is fine except for the one that's obviously not like the others. And then your second team was Giannis, Kawhi, Karis LeVert, Michael Porter Jr., and Porzingis. What is that? That's the most ridiculous all-NBA team I've ever seen for anything. Those five names. Giannis and Kawhi is all right, but Karis LeVert, Porter Jr., and Porzingis? No LeBron? No AD, no Jokic. Christoph Porzingis, he was shit in the bubble too. I don't care what I don't care what he was shooting because Dame was torching him on those pick and rolls. Well, he everyone torch, torches Porzingis on pick and rolls. I mean, if we're being fair, Dame was on another planet during the bubble. I don't know if it was the no fans or the Florida humidity. I don't know what it was, but that dude was hitting threes from across the pond. Oh, it was ridiculous. It was it was crazy. Remember the food the players got. I remember seeing the initial ones, like the first ones, where they get like a half made like ham and cheese sandwich. But then I saw a video from like Complex talking about the chefs and how they made food for the players in the bubble. And I was like, damn, this shit looks good. They were making chicken for them, like marinated chicken wings. I was like, oh, it looks good. But then the players post about it from the room and they're like, eh, it's not that great. I mean, this pre-packaged stuff looks ridiculous. Someone posted, this is Montrose Arrow, this ain't it. <laughs> I'm about to starve out here in Orlando. Well, that's what Joel Embiid said. He said he was gonna lose 50 pounds in the bubble. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's just like pre-packaged, like it's a school field trip type shit. Okay, well, you try making food for, what, hundreds of pro athletes during a global pandemic? Do the NBA, you got give the, the NBA, money. Give the NBA a little bit of leeway. Oh, get out of here. They have the money to do that. Of course, well, they have the money to do it, yeah. Okay, I'm looking at some of these pictures right now. This doesn't look amazing, but it looks okay. Like I'm seeing a nice little salad with some watermelon. I'm seeing some pasta, looks like some ma uh, mashed potatoes, some chicken, maybe a little steak. It's okay, could have been worse. I don't know, you see in this picture Troy Daniels posted where it's just, this is the first day I think where it's the salad, cut up watermelon, some pita chips. I don't know, I'm looking at this that Jalen Horde posted. I'm seeing some- Okay, those wings are looking good. Like, so yeah, some chicken wings, some baked beans, looks like some rice in there. Like I could live off that for a couple months. Oh, here's Montrez with that chicken. Is that chicken undercooked? Kind of looks undercooked. You know it's undercooked. <laughs> I still understand this Jimmy Butler coffee stand for 20 bucks. Hell no. Who is buying that? I don't understand. Where do you get the coffee from? It's a bubble. They're not supposed to let stuff in. Where is he? Is he growing his own coffee beans on his deck? Maybe. He brought that shit with him. Packed it. I love the pictures of the players arriving at the bubble. There was a handful of them that brought their own computer monitors. I, I think a few guys streamed from the bubble. They were bringing their own computer monitors so they could play video games in the bubble. Just like the boys. I mean, that's all we were doing when we were waiting for this shit to start. I mean, what the hell else would you do? You're away from your family. You're just in a hotel. like. Bro, you're in Disney World. Go on Space Mountain. What is this? A hundred page manual they had to follow. There's all the rules. How do you think they had zero COVID cases over four months? You follow every rule in the manual. Well, not everybody did that. So Lou Williams went to a strip club to get chicken wings. Yes. And it was just to get chicken wings? Yes. Are we sure about that? That's bullshit. Why is that Dude, against the manual? I'm assuming it was probably you can't leave your house unless it's for essential business. I'm guessing going to a strip club to get chicken wings was not deemed essential, unless I'm missing something. They're not on DoorDash. 
Apparently not. Should've just gone with Buffalo. Let's be real. <laughs> you know they're on DoorDash. Buffalo. Imagine you're working at Disney or something. You just see LeBron James walking around with that magic band on. Imagine you're the cast member on Space Mountain and Bron, Chris Paul, was Mel- Yeah, Melo would've been in the bubble. The Banana Boat crew just rolls up on Space Mountain, scan their magic bands, hop on, and you just send them off. <laughs> I can't. Who do you think was on the rides? They're fools if they didn't go on the rides. You get after hour access to Disney World and you're not taking advantage of that, you're a damn fool. But who specifically do I think would be on the rides? Giannis. He was loving it. You know Dame wasn't. He just posted online a couple months ago his first time to Disney World. So you know he didn't go on any of the rides at Disneyland. Probably Luca was checking it out. I could see like Tobias Harris being big into it, but... If we're being real though, that's a smart way to keep track of everyone. The magic bands, you can, seriously, you, they could use them as your room key. You could use them to check in for workouts. I mean, it's a great way to keep track of everyone. And if you have to, to do contact tracing. The one thing I always wonder is, what do they use those courts for when they're not being used for the bubble? How many games do they have at, what is it called? The worldwide, the wide world of sports or whatever? I have no idea. Well, why not every year they do like a college tournament there at those preseason tournaments? That'd be cool. I'd be 100% for that. It sponsored the bubble. Yeah. Well, maybe don't call it that. Well, it has to be the bubble. No, you can call it the Mickey Mouse Invitational. <laughs> and the winner is the Mickey Mouse Champion. <laughs> and just have a big ass trophy of Mickey Mouse. Why didn't they just make that the finals trophy? They should have made the finals trophy just Mickey Mouse like dunking a basketball. No, that should have been the shirt that they wear. <laughs> it's plainly obvious seeing certain teams play nowadays that the bubble really helped them out. Now the bubble, it took its toll on a lot of other teams too. A lot of players, Paul George being one of the biggest, have said, you know, it took a it took a toll on them. Being isolated like that, all the checks they had to go through, all the testing they had to go through, being away from their families. I mean, it, that's that's a lot for these players that at the end of the day, they're they're all human like we are. And though they're getting paid millions of dollars, going through that kind of stress, it can take a lot of toll on you. The bubble sounds awful, to be honest. You have to live in a damn hotel room away from your family across the country. All right, yeah, but what if you're living at the yacht club? I don't give a damn. Okay, fine, what if you're living in Animal Kingdom? Because then you can go out on your deck and you can see the animals. If I could see a giraffe, yeah, I'd be down for that. I'm taking a sip out of the $20 coffee I just bought. <laughs> Jimmy Butler coffee. Across the road from Jimmy Butler. <laughs> Watching a giraffe have its breakfast on a leaf. All the masking, all the workouts, being constantly tested, being away from your family, like, doesn't sound like a great experience, but props to all the players who went through with it, who did it, who played the games, who provided us some entertainment when we didn't have much going. So one of the most unique things that I think the bubble introduced was this was right around the time that all the George Floyd stuff was happening. So they allowed the players to put slogans on the back of their jerseys. And I would say damn near what, like 90% of players decided to go through with it. I remember like everyone had one. They had the Black Lives Matter on the court. A few notable players didn't. I remember AD and LeBron were two of the biggest that didn't put anything on the back of their jerseys. I don't know if Giannis did either, um, but there were a few, I don't think James Harden did actually either. There were a couple big players that didn't go through it, but most everyone else, I mean, Dame did, CJ did. Russ did. Most of the big name players and pretty much all the role players did. I remember Nurk had something on the back of his jersey that was like written in his native language. You love that little touch. It was almost like the NBA when they did those nickname jerseys. They should bring those back. Those were awful. Those were awesome. You're seriously telling me you don't want a LeBron James jersey that says King James on the back. Okay, maybe I'd buy that. I will not but... believe your bad lies if you tell me you don't. It only works for the players that did have nicknames because the other random ass players that didn't, that was weird. I would be totally down to bring that back. If just to get LeBron saying King James on the back. One that says Chef Curry. What about Clay where it says the electrician? <laughs> exactly. Like what the hell are you going to put for Clay? People were rocking that Black Lives Matter. How many more? I think that's what Dame had. Uh, say Her Name was another one. Yeah, so it was a good touch. Yeah, I mean, I liked it. I thought it was, in terms of gestures, I thought it was about as good as the NBA could have done. I mean, obviously you can always do more, but in terms of allowing players to spread their own message and put their own touch on a sensitive topic like that, I thought it did a good job.
So July 30th finally rolls around. We finally got basketball back on our screens. We get two games to start off the rest of the season, I guess, and we get the Jazz and the Pelicans and the Lakers and the Clippers. And this was a great day. The NBA had to find a way to fit Zion in there again. The Pelicans didn't have enough national TV games. They said, we're kicking off the bubble with Zion. And he put up 13 points in 15 minutes playing time. And shout out to Rudy for the comeback. The man who started all, we're coming full circle. That's hilarious. The NBA decided, yeah, the one guy who like kicked this whole thing off, let's have him play in the very first game of the restart. That can't be unintentional. Someone played that. So we had that game. And then, of course, you have the Battle of LA, which I think this game tipped off the regular season, like when it first began, right? Yeah. I mean, this is what they hyped up the entire year was that Battle of LA. So might as well fit that in there as well. Lakers took out the Clippers despite, what, 30 points from Paul George, 28 from Kawhi Leonard, and 12 from Patrick Beverly, and not a whole lot else. AD started his bubble feast by dropping 34. Shooting 17 free throws. Jeez. And basketball was back. Basketball was back. And this was like, put aside the fact that the pandemic was awful and people were losing their jobs, but just being a sports fan when the bubble started and there was five, six games on and they were on all day and they were nationally televised and it was just, there was nothing else to do because we couldn't go to work. So it was just... You sat inside, you hopped on Discord with your boys, and you watched basketball all day. Like, this was great. Yeah, you'd have the NBA going like it was March Madness. It would start at like 10 in the morning, and that would run until 10 at night. Just NBA game after game. At this point, it had been, what, four months since we'd seen basketball? So, you know what? Garbage game between the Pacers and the Kings. I don't know if they actually played. But garbage game between the Pacers and the Kings? Like, yep, I, I will take all of it. The bubble seed in games were some of the most ridiculous performances we've ever seen, too. TJ Warren just getting insanely hot. Yeah, we went in and we picked out a bunch of notable seeding games. So first one, Houston Rockets versus Dallas Mavericks, 153 to 149. The game did go to overtime, but James Harden put up 49 points, nine boards, eight assists. God, remember when he could do that? Like it was nothing. Chris Stops gave you 39. Remember when that was plausible? And this was just day two of the bubble. We have the first appearance of the Blazers on this list, 140 to 135. If the bubble showed anything, it showed that in front of an empty arena or in front of no crowd, NBA players just don't miss open shots. Like a crowd can get in a player's head and you know, they can distract and whatnot. But when they're just in a gym by themselves, they don't miss because some of the scores from the bubble were insane 149 for boston against brooklyn on the final day we got the start of dame's just torrid run where he was just lighting every team up when he dropped 45 against the nuggets in a 10 point win i mean it's the bubble mvp what do you expect what else we have is 51 against <laughs> against the philadelphia 76ers a couple days later and despite that the blazers only won by three damon lillard was on a mission to get us in the playoffs he was gonna do anything he could what he say before the bubble i ain't coming to, here to not make the playoffs something like that we have a random 41 bomb from austin rivers of all players that's got to be a career high off the bench it looks like too we have the game where kyle kuzma hit the game winning three against the denver nuggets that was one of the most awkward game winners i've ever seen like he just hit that and there was almost like no reaction well, they were in a building with no fan. That was the first, like, big buzzer beater. I think there would be a couple in the playoffs. But that was the first big buzzer beater in front of no fans. And all you could hear is just the players reacting. So it was, like you said, it almost felt like there was no reaction. And it was like Kyle Kuzma of all players to the game winner. I guess Kuz do got that strap. How about this random ass duel between Russell Westbrook and Giannis? Brody gives you 31 and Giannis gets 36. See, that's the stuff. It's like the NBA is back. You, you take that kind of stuff for granted during the regular season. We have James Harden dropping 45 on the Pacers just to lose. Because he had to play TJ Warren. TJ Warren didn't even play this game. That Rockets team had a tough bubble. Yeah, they made it to the second round, but they had a tough bubble. Michael Porter Jr. kind of had a coming out party. Had 37 against the Thunder, 30 against the Spurs. Nah, he had his coming out party the next year. But this was the first glimpse we've seen of him because there was all that talk about what he could be. And then finally, he kind of showed a little bit, a little bit of potential. Another day masterclass, 42 points and a one point win over the hapless Brooklyn Nets. Karis LeVert said, I don't care if that's Michael Jordan, you do not leave Damian Lillard.
You guarding him. I don't care if that's CJ McCullough. I don't care if that's Michael Jordan over there. You, you pick him up. Two. I got you. Now, I, I don't. He got. That's the ball right there. And Dame got it. He gonna shoot it from the NBA. You feel me? As a Blazer fan, like it was great to watch Dame put up all these points, and you know he won Bubble MVP. So it's great to see him get some acknowledgement for these performances but as a fan of his and as a fan of the team it was just sad because it's like this guy is doing everything he can literally everything he can he's dropping 40 50 60 points and you know any other superstar steph drops 60 points the warriors are winning by 30. lebron drops 60 lakers are winning by 30. dame drops 60 we win by three <laughs> we're lucky to escape out of there with a win it's not fair man get this man some help we had the play-in game where the Grizzlies had completely bottled their chance to make the playoffs. I mean, they let us when the, the seeding game started, and by the end, we had passed them up in the seedings, and then we just beat them. CJ did that one thing where he can just take over on a random-ass, like, play-in slash playoff game. Completely just own them. Yeah, CJ finally had a good game. 11-19 shooting, 29 points. Nurt gave you 22. Melo gave you 21. Arizona gave you five. That's all you can ask for. It's five more than I expected. John Morant had 35 and it wasn't enough. I don't remember this game being that close. Every game was close for us in the bubble. What, you think with this bummy ass defense, we were gonna hold off any team from scoring? I mean, I guess we were up by 15 in the first quarter, but ain't no lead safe with this team. The Grizzlies were up five with five minutes to go. I mean, Anthony Tolliver's playing for them. What? If you look at the minutes for the players, Dame played 45 minutes, CJ played 44, Nurk played 41, Melo played 38, Gary Trent played 35, and the next most was Hassan playing 14. Classic Terry just running his starters into the ground. And by the time the playoffs come around, they're fucking dead. All right, so when the playoffs actually started in the bubble, first of all, a lot of the first round series were kind of shit. Holy God, what are you this showing me? His head. Come on! But we'll start with the objectively best series in the first round, and that was that Jazz Nugget series. That was crazy, because that was the first time you were like, yeah, the bubble is not going to be the same with some of the numbers they were putting up. Like, you could tell there's a huge difference playing just in a empty gym compared to like a crazy playoff crowd. Mitchell kind of lost the reputation, but at the time, that dude was known as just a playoff torture. He had 57 in game one. That's insane. And he dropped 50 in game four. Game four, what a duel. Mitchell and Murray both dropped 50. I will say, Jamal Murray, for a guy that a career is like 18 points per game, that dude drops 50 a ton. I feel like he's done it like three or four times. Oh, when Jamal Murray gets hot, he can straight torch. Which makes me confused. Like, how is he only... I feel like he should be averaging 25 a game. Maybe not quite that much, but like 23 a game, you know? The fact that he's a career like 18 points per game... Just, it feels low to me. Remember that 50 point game he had with no free throws? Yeah, exactly. He got 21 to 25, eight to 10 from three. That's insane. And there were some ridiculous series too because of the no home crowds. Utah blows a 3-1 lead. Of course they would. You know, it's cool to dunk on Utah now, but we've been doing that for years. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's about it now, but where were you back then when they were the first seed? <laughs> that was still hating. <laughs> and then you got to game seven. Every game is just high scoring, like lights out shooting. People are torching each other. And then game seven is just a grind out game. 80 to 78. Game seven was just a slug fest. I loved game seven. I love super low scoring, like grinded out slug fest games. I love them in football and I love them in basketball too. Mike Conley almost won at the end. <laughs> oh boy. It was a great series though. Best series maybe in the whole playoffs, honestly. Yeah, probably. And for the first round, I mean, it's all downhill from there. Well, not quite all downhill. The Clippers and Mavs series had some high moments. Luka hitting that game four buzzer beater. Kind of his arrival onto the NBA scene as a legitimate superstar. And that was the start of the Clippers-Mavs rivalry because they played each other again in the next year's playoffs. I mean, I, I'm for it. The NBA needs more rivalries. They have the Lakers-Celtics rivalry and like that's it. So if we could, if we could get the Mavericks and Clippers in like the conference semifinals next Next year as a 2-3 matchup i think that would be great as a blazer fan we really thought we were going to beat the lakers too in that first round huh absolutely we thought we were going to beat the lakers we won that game one and we were like we got this charles barkley even came out on inside the nba with the broom he said it's a sweep <laughs> I remember we were just, that was the best moment we've experienced as a Blazer fan. 
That was better than the Lillard shot. When Charles Barkley did that. Better than making it to the Western Conference Finals? Yeah. Yeah. I remember we were in your basement watching that game. And we, of course, it goes on to inside the NBA. And Charles just comes out with a broom. And I pulled the Sal Volcano and just <laughs> fell over laughing. I heard Sal fall. <laughs> And then they just dominated us. LeBron hit that La F U three. <laughs> uh, game three was close. We had a chance in game three. Yeah, we had a chance. But it wasn't meant to be. Then there was the Houston OKC series. Chris Paul playing his former team. Yeah, this series was actually a pretty good series. It was, you know, what, seven games. He had the narrative of Chris Paul playing on his old team. He had a few close games, a few blowouts. One of the games went to overtime. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this series. Chris Paul was good, but the series highlight, that was when Harden blocked Lou Dort. <laughs> and then Lou Dort threw the ball out of bounds. Yeah, he tried, tried to, to throw, throw it off, off Harden. Harden. It's like, bro, you gotta shoot. There's a second left. Yeah, exactly. You did not have enough time to pull that off. Harden, that was, I'll give him that after getting blocked by Ginobili a couple years prior, making a defensive play in the playoffs. Broken clock is right twice a day. That's all I'm going to say. He was pretty good this series, put up 30, 46% shooting. Yeah, he was good this series. Not on defense. He was good on offense. Ross played three games and was trash. Shot 41%, 16% from three. I mean, it's Russ. What did you expect? That is what I expected. I expected worse, to be honest. How about the Magic and the Bucks literally pulling the same thing that the Blazers did with the Lakers, win game one and then just get swept? <laughs> I mean, the Magic did that against the Raptors as well. It's like, no one's going to take the Magic seriously. I don't remember the last time they won a playoff series. I can't remember if it was the Magic social media team or our social media team tweeted at us or we tweeted at them about like underdogs winning game one because we both won game ones as eight seeds on the same day. And of course, we both proceed to get swept after that. So, ouch. Besides that, the East first round, it was boring. Don't remember any of these. But some of those teams just didn't want to show up. And where was Ben Simmons? Where was Ben Simmons? I don't know. Was it his back this time? Did he have a headache? Did he chip a nail? I, who knows at this point? And who honestly cares? <laughs> exactly. That being said, I would still take Ben Simmons on the Blazers. Let me just put that out there. Second round got a bit better for the East. Bucks versus Heat. That series was interesting just because it was so fascinating how they just shut Giannis down completely. They built that wall at the rim and were like, you are not gonna dunk on us and Giannis was a basically a non-factor in this series Jimmy B outplayed him I mean f f did Tyler Hero outplay him this was the playoffs and Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson couldn't miss well yeah they were playing in an empty gym in Orlando and the Raptors hopes of repeating it wasn't gonna happen not without Kawhi mm. I was impressed the fact that the Raptors were as good as they were considering they lost Kawhi. I mean, they were still the second seed in the East and they took the Celtics team to seven games. Kyle Lowry was pretty good in that series. Now he's washed, but at the time I was like, damn, okay, Kyle, I see you. Yeah, no, he was great in this series. I, this series is interesting though, because it's the first time in NBA history and the only time in NBA history that the quote unquote road team won every game in the series, which you can call them a road team if you want, but <laughs> they, they played in the same place every single time. And that OG and Anubi, game winner in game three, it's one of the quickest shots I've ever seen. It looks like funny the way he shoots it. That's one of the most underrated playoff buzzer beaters ever. First of all, he's left completely wide open. And there was what, 0.3 on the clock? I think there was a bit more, but that was insane. They just threw it to him and he just like chucks it at the rim, hoping it's gonna go in and just <laughs> does. And everyone's, everyone's kind of surprised that it even happened. They're like, how did that shit go in? I mean, they're surprised he just got the shot off to begin with. In the Lakers versus Rockets series. Russ, you want to talk about bad? That dude was terrible, that series. Yeah, I think, wasn't he actually decent in game one? Well, game one is when he hit that three and then yelled at those babies, so. Only Russ would yell at a non-existent crowd. <laughs> Someone's grandma was there getting yelled at. <laughs> I just said that, I don't think so, but. This was the beginning, I think, of where everyone finally started to realize, like, yeah, he's not a winning basketball player. He doesn't, he doesn't win games. He sells tickets. He generates hype. He doesn't win you games. But he's not good. No, he's terrible. <laughs> I genuinely think if the Lakers cut him tomorrow, I don't think any team would sign him. Their overall would go up in 2K. <laughs> Yeah, the Lakers proceeded to lose game one in their first two series and then just win the next four. And God, the Rockets, I mean, you give up all those picks and Chris Paul for Brody and you don't even get as far as you did the previous year. 
I mean, you at least got to a sixth game against Golden State. You only got five games against, I think what most people would agree is a Lakers team that's not as good as that Golden State team. Yeah, they were worse for Brody. They messed up. That trade is an all-time L. It's almost like trading for Westbrook is always a bad idea. Never trade for Westbrook. Never. Watch the Blazers will do it now. All right, this Clippers Nuggets series honestly kind of became a bigger story than the Lakers championship if I'm being honest. No, this needs to get talked about more. This does not get talked about enough. I'm ready to flame them. It'd been over a year. We'd been told about the Battle of LA and how these two teams are gonna meet in the conference finals. And then the Clippers do that? That's what happens when you disrespect the regular season like that. You can't just throw a bunch of guys together without having them play together and develop chemistry and expect it to work. I think the Clippers starting lineup, didn't they play what? Like 11 games together all year? Like this ain't 2K. That's not enough. No, and playoff P, that dude was bad. That side of the backboard shot had me dead. That had all of us dead. I think Paul George at this point has started to make people forget about that. I mean, you don't really hear people call him pandemic P and way off P as much anymore, but boy, that must have been a rough couple months for that dude. So that's what Mike Breen said. He was like, way off. George, way off. It's the side of the backboard. Even Kawhi, that dude does not get enough shit for this. Like, if this was Steph, if it was LeBron, if it was KD. I was going to say, if this was LeBron, people would never shut up about this. I mean, they don't. They, they People still talk about 2011 for LeBron. Exactly, and he didn't blow a 3-1 lead. How about the fact that this was the third time Doc Rivers has blown a 3-1 lead? That dude's got to have made up, like, a third of the 3-1 leads that have been blown. I don't think I've ever seen a single coach live off the back of a single championship longer than Doc Rivers. Dude had a stacked roster, won a championship, and people 14 years later are still talking about how like an amazing of a coach he is. Dude still has a job. Yeah, exactly. Any other sport, it just, it, this wouldn't happen. Gene Chizik won a national championship at Auburn in 2010. He got fired two years later because people were like, oh, he had Cam Newton. And without Cam Newton, he was trash. Now, Doc Rivers is a better basketball coach than Gene Chizik is a football coach. But I, I want to stop hearing about the 08 Celtics. Celtics championship when people talk about Doc Rivers. No, because anyone could have won with that roster. Are you kidding me? Not only did they blow a 3-1 lead, they had leads in the games that they blew. They blew a 16-point lead in game five. They blew a 19-point lead in game six, and they blew a 12-point lead in game seven. That's double-digit leads in all three of the games that they blew. That's insane. That That's just the cherry on top. You're up big in all three games, and you can't close any of them. And they got routed in game six and seven. Like, they lost game six by 13. They lost game seven by 15, I think. So they were up big, and then basically got outscored by like 30 points for the rest of the game. Okay, these got to be some of the more forgettable conference finals. These series never get talked about. How about most forgettable? I can't name you a single thing that happened in either of these series except for 80s game winner in game two. Okay, Bam had that block when Tatum... Tatum basically had a clear dunk. The ball was like halfway down it. Oh, yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay. And then Bam said, hell no. God, yeah, that too. But besides that, that's it. And people were really saying, I think, that the Nuggets could beat the Lakers after... I mean, they beat the Clippers, who everyone thought was the superior team. So they beat the Clippers. Why couldn't they beat the Lakers? And then the Lakers just came out and stomped them. Yeah, 80 went crazy. 80 dominated Jokic. That was back when he was supposedly better. What? That was two years ago. 80's decline is something else. You're right. People were saying he was better than Jokic, better than Embiid, better than Giannis. Now is AD even top 10? I don't think so. Is he top 15? Maybe? Come on, he gotta be top 15. I don't know. I'll, I'll put up, a, I'll make up a list when I'm editing this. This is the problem with the bubble. It had some moments in the playoffs, but like, it's kind of trash. I think the lack of crowd hurts it a lot because a lot of big iconic playoff moments, you remember the crowd's reaction, whether it's on the road and it's a crowd all hushed in silence and like they can't believe that their team is lost or if it's at home, it's just jubilation at whatever they've seen. The fact that every big moment, like Bam's block on Tatum, if that had happened in front of a crowd, you'd hear either the gasp of a Celtics crowd or the roar of a Heat crowd. And in the bubble, it was just, I mean, you had Mike Breen doing his best. Butler got downhill, couldn't punch it. Bam! Says, get it out of here it lacked that extra like spark that a crowd gives to games bubbles atmosphere yeah it had mike breen 30 people on those screens zooming in from their goddamn desk and like 10 <laughs> babies with moms 
the like big. section. Like there was no atmosphere. That zoom thing was dumb as hell. I'm sorry. Okay, would you rather have had the zoom thing or would you have rather just had black walls? I'd rather have like the 2K fans you see when you're playing 2K just on like somehow if they could like just put those in there or something like that and they just have the dumb reactions. So they should have put up like a green screen. Yeah. I don't know. I think the atmosphere in the bubble, they did the best with what they had. Yeah, they just didn't have shit. The conference finals were forgettable. How about the NBA finals? Just as forgettable. Lowest rated finals of all time, which I understand, but I still find a little bit surprising considering it was still COVID. There were still a lot of lockdowns. People still didn't have a lot to do, but sit inside and watch stuff. And the fact that the NBA finals did so poorly in the ratings. Game three of the 2020 NBA Finals is the lowest rated NBA Finals game of all time. Now, two of these games went head to head with the NFL, games three and six. And like I said, game three is the lowest rated of all time. And game five actually outdrew game six. You know, the game that clinched the series for the Lakers. Well, the problem is there were so many people that didn't know the NBA was still going on. It was October. Exactly. Who's watching the NBA in October in a bubble game? Like the time the NBA Finals was wrapping up this year is the time during most seasons seasons that like preseason games are starting and did anyone care at that point like all the luster all the hype of basketball being back was kind of just dead by the end of it, it had been a month and a half it it had definitely lost its luster LeBron's still eight though. I thought 80 was gonna win finals MVP through the first two games or so. Cause he was just like, nobody can stop him. Bam wasn't healthy and LeBron just took over. It's just kind of a shame that no one gave a shit at that point. And the Lakers, they won that championship and Lakers fans will, you know, you can parade around that you have that championship and that's all fine and good. And I don't necessarily agree with people that say this championship is meaningless because I feel like the stress that it takes on the players to be away from your families, away from your kids, away from your homes for that long and for the Lakers to stay together and outlast essentially outlast every other team I think that's commendable but at the same time they didn't have to go on the road a single time they didn't have to get on a plane a single time they never went to a hostile atmosphere it just feels like something's missing from this championship they would have won that shit regardless and we all know it probably but again it just feels like something is off they had Caruso back when we thought he was just a meme didn't know he was actually good people were saying it at the time but this Lakers team doesn't really seem that good I, like I don't understand how they were so good they were amazing defensively but they couldn't shoot at all and it always felt like watching them I was like okay how are they constantly winning I, I never understood it because they had the best defense by far and they had LeBron and AD it just felt like that any of the previous championship teams from the past like 10 years would have kicked the shit out of this Lakers team. I don't know, you're hating. I probably am hating, but the Warriors would have destroyed this Lakers team. Yeah, the, the Warriors. I think LeBron's Cavs would have destroyed that Lakers team. Are you sure about that? You have LeBron and AD, which is better than LeBron and Kyrie. And then if you look at the role players, they're actually not bad. KCP, which you can hate on him, but in that finals, he still kind of shot bad, but he put up points. Kuz, Danny Green, Markeith Morris, Caruso. Like that's really not that bad of a supporting cast, especially when you have one of the best one-two punches of modern NBA. Not better than Katie and Steph, but. Maybe I'm just biased because of what they are now. At least for this year, they were good. The next year, they were okay. And last year, they were garbage. Yeah, but they used to have coups. Think about that. That made the difference. It was all coups. Should have never traded him. Of course not. So what's the legacy? What are people gonna say in 30 years about the bubble? God, I have no idea. If the playing game is still around, people are gonna say, okay, that originated from the bubble. And that's been a really cool thing so far. It's only been around for two years, but I think most people can agree that the playing game is pretty cool. But people I think are gonna look back and be like, wow, that was a really great achievement for the NBA to bring all those players and staff and families into one space during a pandemic and have zero COVID cases. That's an insane achievement, but I don't know if we're going to get anything besides that. I, I can just say it's super weird going back and watching highlights. Imagine 50 years from now when it gets brought up. Remember the first bubble? The first bubble. Don't you put that on us! Yeah, the bubble. Fun at the time. Who cares now? That, that's what it is. And that's the video. What's your favorite memory from the NBA bubble? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop it a like. It really helps out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.